Hello, Landon. Kurt. What are you doing? We're trying to say hi to everyone. Can you... <laughs> Let's say hi to everyone. Yeah? <laughs> okay. So today's video is a little bit of an update on Liam, but mainly it's to share the two-year-old signs and autism. I wanted to wait until Liam was a little bit older so I could kind of compare this and, and kind of talk about the signs we see in this and this whole guy right here, if you are new here, my name is Stephanie. This is Liam. And Liam was diagnosed with autism, moderate to severe, when he was 18 months old. So he's almost two and a half now. Doing good, right? Liam, are you doing good? He is nonverbal, except for one word now, which is... Good job. It's no, no. I need... Liam is currently in <laughs> occupational speech, physical the what? He's in occupational therapy, speech therapy, physical therapy, and early intervention. So, he is amazing. I think he's like the cutest kid ever. Oh, okay, okay, okay. What are you doing? If you also are new here, you don't know this, but Liam is actually my third child to be diagnosed on the spectrum. We have a 12 year old that is mild to moderate and a four year old that was diagnosed with autism, but we're having him reevaluated. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right, guys, we are back. I took Liam to Lonnie just because having him in here is going to be really hard and this picture, I am going to be lowering it, so in future sit-down videos, you'll be able to see it all. But today's video, as I said, is going to talk about two-year-old sons and autism. So you're probably watching this video if you are worried about your two-year-old. I've already done a video where I talked about what a two-year-old should or should not be doing. I will probably kind of briefly go over a few of the things, but overall, if you're just wanting to know what the normal milestones are at this point, definitely go check out that video. I'll link it below in the description. This is mainly going to focus around autism signs. Liam recently had an early intervention assessment to move his IFSP from Florida to Colorado. If you don't know what an IFSP is, it's basically like an IEP for under the age of three. Last year when Florida did it, they said that he was at like a seven to eight month level. Uh, this year when they did it, he's around about 10, 11 months. It was a little bit of a bummer. I, I did think he was gonna be a little bit further along, but I also know these assessments a lot of times are just formalities. That doesn't mean that Liam's barely progressed because the child I have today is definitely different than the child I had a year ago. We are so proud of Liam. If you guys have any specific questions, um, definitely leave them in the comments below. I don't mind doing another like Q&A video to answer specific ones, but hopefully, hopefully I answer everything. When I go over some of these things, your child may do some of them and that doesn't mean they're autistic. They may not do some of these and it doesn't mean your child is not autistic. If you are concerned, please bring it up to your physician. I have a video recently that I posted of how to get an autism evaluation. So if you're concerned about your child and you want them evaluated i will also link that video below so you guys can go check that out to kind of start that process every child is different some people have found like when they're watching these they're like sounds just like a normal child and that's the thing is that a lot of children on the spectrum in their earlier years do come across as just a typical child unless you know specifically what to look for i will tell you that i've had quite a few kids on the spectrum as i said and every time it catches me by surprise because I think that they're doing fine and then we got to find out that they're not. First, we are going to address social skills. Now, this is a area that my children, all of my kids on the spectrum have always scored higher in and it is what made Liam to be diagnosed with moderate to severe autism instead of just severe autism. Liam, as you saw, is a happy, laughing, smiley kid. There are some social skills that he still falls short of. For example, if they don't respond to their name, that is a big red flag, especially at the age of two. Liam has come a long way. Like before, uh, when he first got diagnosed, he would respond maybe once or twice. 
um, at his head times. Now I would say he does it about three or four times, but it's still something he struggles in. It's still something we're working on. If your two year old is like not responding to their name at all, or not really responding to receptive language. Like if you give them a simple command, like come sit down or go over there or throw this away, they should be able to follow simple one step and even two step directions. My son Lex, he's four. And I remember at like 19, 20 months old, I could tell him to go throw away his diaper in the trash. He would pick up the diaper, go walk to the trash can and throw it away. I hate doing this one, but of course it's one of them and it's avoiding eye contact. This does not mean that they don't have any eye contact, but this might be something that they're not super strong in. With Liam, how he is, is a lot of times he looks at our nose and our mouth. I feel like he is getting better with eye contact, but he still has this habit of if we, we meet eye contact with him, he'll look away. So that can be something too. My son Noah never really struggled with eye contact that bad. If your child has decent eye contact if eye contact has never been anything you've been concerned about that doesn't mean your child's not autistic another one is they prefer to play alone um, they might do what's called parallel play now this is kind of normal to a point uh, sometimes kids just might want to be by other kids and they're just like playing but they're also not going to really initiate play if they're parallel playing all the time and they're never wanting to play with other kids that's definitely a concern by two years old the natural reaction should want to be to socialize with other kids kids' age and things like that. Liam never initiates play. We have a four-year-old, a almost 16-month-old, and he never goes up to them and tries playing with them. If Liam is playing and our four-year-old comes up to him, um, Liam doesn't even really acknowledge him most times. So he's just kind of off doing his own thing. So they can both be building and using the same blocks, but they're not actually playing together. Noah was a big parallel player, and I remember Danielle a couple years ago actually told me that for the longest time, she thought Noah didn't like her. Danielle was three years old when Noah was born. So the three older kids are actually really close in age. So Lonnie and Danielle would play together, but Noah never wanted to play with them. And I remember it looks like they would be playing, but they wouldn't be. They would all be at the kitchen. Danielle and Lonnie Jr. would be like playing like they're cooking and then Noah was always off to the side. Liam is the same way. If he sees the kids playing, he just kind of walks by it and just does his does his own thing. Another sign is if, if they don't share. <laughs> now, of course, most two-year-olds don't like sharing, but there's a difference between not liking to share and not understanding the concept. For example, Lex has always understood the concept of sharing, but he's never really liked sharing. Liam just doesn't understand the, okay, it's my turn. I can still hold my hand out like this and he never drops anything into it. If Lex takes a toy or something away from Liam, Liam like will cry or fuss a little bit, but he doesn't try getting it back or anything because he doesn't understand that Lex is supposed to be sharing with him. He's just accepted that his brother took his toy and walks away. So one of these signs is if they prefer not to be cuddled, touched, held, that kind of thing. Noah was always the kid that he never wanted his hair touched. Like he's never a kid that comes up and cuddles very much. Even now, there are sometimes I can put my arm around him for a little bit on the couch, but then he's just done. Liam though, Liam is a kid that loves it. He is definitely a sensory seeker, so he loves for me to cuddle and all of those things with him. Lex was also a kid that doesn't really like to be cuddled either. Lex definitely has a sensory issue. Whether he is diagnosed on the spectrum for good or not, I don't know. But sensory, he definitely has sensory. And sometimes he will cuddle, but it has to be very much on his terms. And then there are other times I will just go to rub his shoulder and he freaks out and starts screaming at me. If you have a child that is reacting abnormally to touch, then that can always be a, a sign of autism. It can also be a sign of sensory and you don't have to necessarily have autism to have a sensory disorder. This is a one that's really, really interesting and it's they don't notice or care if you hurt yourself. Normally, if I hurt myself, like it's not like everyday stuff, right? It's like something's happened, mom's hurt herself, mom stubbed her toe, mom accidentally cut herself with a steak knife. That's happened before. If someone hurts themselves, near Liam, he absolutely has no reaction. I feel like basically it's a shift in emotions. If they're not noticing your shift of emotions, whether you're hurt or upset, then that can kind of be a red flag. That isn't to say a child with autism or an individual with autism doesn't have empathy. They definitely do. Noah is a very empathetic kid, but I feel like sometimes they just don't process the emotions the same way we do, especially when 
they're two years old. I feel like as Noah's gotten older, he's been able to process it easier and, and, and be able to show it more. I mean, two years old is like a baby in this world. <laughs> they they are still learning things. And so until they, they kind of learn what's appropriate and what the response of everyone else has, they're just going to kind of have their own response, whether that's for that reason or they're just kind of off in their own world. Liam isn't really aware of much of anything of what goes around him you really have to catch his attention to do that that is why liam hasn't been able to learn sign language because you have to have some like engagement interaction he has low muscle tone as well so a lot of those fine motor skills are really hard for liam another one is if not only do they not notice that your facial expressions change and your emotions have changed they really don't have a wide range of emotions for example Liam smiles, cries, and laughs. Like that is it. I've never seen Liam scared ever. When we would take Noah to Disney World and we went on a Peter Pan ride that he loved, we didn't know that he loved it until the end because he didn't let us know by his facial expressions. After we were done, we were like, did you like that Noah? And Noah was like, yeah, that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently he loved it because he still talks about that ride. So he loved it. He just has a different way of showing those emotions. Another is can't be easily soothed or comforted. So while Liam doesn't have meltdowns yet, hopefully he won't. He does have emotional breakdowns where it's really hard to to soothe him and calm him down. The same thing with a child that might be having a tantrum. It, it may not look like a crying fest like Liam. It might look like they're getting really upset and they're having those, those two-year-old tantrums where they're rolling around on the floor. You should be able to get them calmed down within a couple minutes. Lex I'm using as a typical example just because he's my youngest that follows the more typical path. Lex has had tantrums, but they're over in like two minutes. Like I'm able to get him calmed down almost immediately compared to Noah, sometimes his tantrums when he was younger would last an hour or two. So that's not a typical thing. A child should be able to, to self-soothe or be soothed by a parent pretty quickly. Each of these, a child has to have so many traits in each category in order to get an autism diagnosis. That's why when I tell people just a speech delay isn't autism. Autism is a big, a big round, circle of traits inside of it that come from three different categories. So you have to have more than just one social skill being a regular kind of thing. So the next one is language and communication skills. This is probably the biggest one and the one we struggle with the most with Liam. A two year old should have at least 50 words. They should also start to be putting together two word phrases. Want milk, drink milk. I don't know. It's been a long time since I've had a typical two year old. <laughs> so when you have a child that is delayed, then it's definitely a concern. If your child has no words by two years old, that doesn't mean they're autistic, but that is definitely something to bring up to the doctor. But I feel like a lot of pediatricians now are very familiar and aware that Lack of speech at two isn't normal. Liam, as I said earlier, has one functional word. Um, he only says no when he's upset. So it's not like I can ask him, Liam, do you want this drink? Do you want this juice? And he'll say no. He never uses it in a receptive, conversational way or expressive way. He just knows that when we're doing something he's not happy about, he, he tells us no, no, because that's the only word he's receptive to and he understands is no. When we tell him no, he will stop what he's doing and run away or throw himself on the floor crying. Another thing is if they repeat words over and over. Everyone's heard Liam say words or things like that. It's always been echolela or scripting, one or the other. It's never been 100% functional. He doesn't do it anymore, but for a while, a Liam would say, if we said ready, set, he would say go. And so he learned that go went after ready, set. He didn't understand what the word go meant, but he understood it in that context and only that context. So with Ekalela, it's where a child will repeat the word you say either right after you're saying it um, or over and over and over. Now there is some level of imitating that is normal and that's kind of how most kids learn how to talk. Like they kind of copy what we say, they kind of learn that's what it means kind of thing. It's kind of hard because like physically he can verbally talk. 
but he has to understand what those words mean and attach it to something in order for it to be functional. And we have always felt so grateful that Liam even did echolela or scripting and we've we've just kind of prepared ourselves that there is a chance that Liam may only communicate with us through scripting and echolela. There are plenty of kids that do that or that he may be an extremely late talker. I don't wanna sit here and do a woe is me because I know that there are parents out there and there are children out there that are completely nonverbal and can't do echolela, they don't do scripting, they do nothing. And I know those parents would love for their child to communicate to them that way. Like for a while, Liam learned, um, if I gave him a kiss and hug, we say love you. So anytime I would give him a kiss and hug, he'd say, love you. It was adorable, guys. It warmed my heart so, so much, but he stopped doing it. And that's the thing with Liam, is Liam is two steps forward, one steps back constantly. His progression has been probably the biggest hangup in skills. And I'm sorry if I get sidetracked, guys. I'm trying to update you guys on Liam, but also give you signs for those who are watching this video for that reason. If they're saying the same word over and over, if it seems like they're kind of like, learning to say it in only a certain situation kind of thing. So this is a big one. This next one is that they don't point and they don't follow point. So by age two, a child should definitely be pointing as a way of communication. So if they're wanting something, they point. If they want you to look at something, they're pointing. Liam can physically point. He started physically pointing around uh, like 18 months it was kind of his way like of exploring but he never used it to communicate and he never really knew what pointing meant and then we put him in ABA for a couple months and ABA really fixated on him being able to point so then he just would walk around the house all day just with his pointy finger out not realizing what it meant even now he doesn't use pointing to do anything but boss us around <laughs> he goes no no he still uses a just kind of like as a way to touch they should be able to point and then when you point at something they should follow in the direction and look in the direction that you are pointing in if they're looking at your finger that does not count from what i read they have to actually look in the direction you are looking in this is apparently a skill that they get pretty early on like 12 months old so if by the age of two if they're not follow pointing then it's kind of a concern another one is if they rarely or never use body language like waving or up or come here. Liam started waving at two. Waving is a really early skill. Like waving is like a 11 month skill. So a lot of these things like the body gestures are things they learn by their first birthday. So if, you're, if your child's two and they aren't waving, if they aren't showing some form of nonverbal communication, that is definitely a concern I would personally bring up to the doctor. A lot of people fixate around not having words. And it's not just not having words that's the big deal. It's the not understanding words or not showing nonverbal communication. Our kids talk to us way before they can actually talk. And if they're missing those foundation skills, there's the concern, not necessarily that they aren't talking. Some kids are just late talkers and I have no idea what's going on with my baby. Hang on. A few moments later. Penelope is having a diva fit right now. So the last one that I have in language and communication skills is pretend play. Pretend play is a really big one. By age two, they should have a lot of the basic pretend play. Like if they have a baby doll and a little bottle, they should be pretending to feed the baby doll with a bottle. They should be pretending to like eat, pretend to be on the phone. Those kind of things are pretty early on. We have a baby doll and bottle here <laughs> that I bought for Penelope and Liam has no idea what to do with it. But we have seen Liam a couple of times pretend to be on a telephone and kind of do like babble talk. So he's definitely starting to get those skills. So if they're just not interested in that pretend play or they just don't seem to get it by the age of two, that's, that's a big deal. So this next category is probably what we all think of when we think of autism. Um, and that's why it's called stereotypical behaviors. Um, it can also be called irregular patterns or something like that. There's a million names for it. But, but, but it's basically the things that are most associated with autism. Repetitive motions, um, also known as stimming. As you become more of a special needs parent, you won't, you won't refer to as repetitive motions. You'll refer to as stimming. Uh, that can be like a head banging. It can be 
body rocking, hand flapping, wrist movements, head shaking. It can be jumping. There's a million things that can be a stem. And all a stem is, is it's a stimulatory behavior that helps them process emotions, helps them calm down, whether it's from excitement or anxiety. Noah has a stem where he like hits his chest now. And for us, stems have always came and gone like crazy. Like they always change up. They're always something new. Uh, Noah has always had a hand flapping stem. Liam has a hand flapping stem. Liam has a head shaking stem. Uh, he also has this jumping thing. But the one we see the most with Liam is the head shaking one. And that's how we can always know if he's either stressed out or just overstimulated and he needs to kind of chill down and calm down. Lex has a tongue clicking stem. Every child is different. Um, Liam also has a vocal one he does too. So that's, that's super fun when Noah is a sensory avoider and he doesn't like sound. But anything that's repetitive and just not typical, like you, you can kind of tell. Liam's head shaking stem was the first thing to let me know that I thought that he was on the spectrum because it wasn't just like you shake your head a little bit, he'd shake his head like this and then he'd stop and he'd do it again. And it was really, really fast and constant. And sometimes, I mean, he would just be running and doing it. Spinning's another one. Liam has started to do the spinning and two, Lex the spinning. But with Lex, it's kind of hard to tell if it's a stim or if it's just because he's so hyperactive. Another irregular behavior is lining things up. I think that's <laughs> the most stereotypical thing that you think of when you have a child on the spectrum, right? But the funny thing is this, is that Liam is the first child I've had that has been so obsessive about it. He color coordinates and he lines and stacks things up like in a perfect order. He finds random things throughout the house and then just lines them up on, on, on the table. He loves lining things up all day long. Noah liked it occasionally. But sometimes he would do like a catty corner line a little bit, but that was it. He didn't really have any of these things that are kind of the more classic typical things that you think of with autism and neither did Lex. Um, he would line things up occasionally, yeah, but it wasn't so excessive that you would think anything of it. Liam's is definitely obsessive and he gets upset if you move something out of it. Another one is getting upset and frustrated in just um, small changes in daily routine. So sometimes we, we kind of come up with routines without realizing them and the kids kind of get used to it. Like Liam just kind of got used to like having therapies at certain times and that's kind of how his day went. And then if we had a, a day where the therapist couldn't come or didn't come, then that would like completely mess him up. Noah has always been a kid that you have to stick to it. Like he would get upset if I went a different way home because that's what he was always used to seeing. And he would just scream and scream and scream about that it was the wrong way. So sometimes it can be hard for children to do big, big changes like moving or changing schools or school being out. Those are kind of normal things for kids to kind of struggle with the adjustment at first. But if it's just small little things like the way home or just just your, your normal day, just being tweaked a little bit or something, then that's where it gets a little bit more on the abnormal side. I didn't realize this. Sometimes you just don't realize how autistic your, your children really are. Um, they play with the toys the same way every time. So for example, Liam gets the blocks and he does the same thing every time. He color coordinates them. He he lines them up or he builds them and that's it. He doesn't ever do anything else. He doesn't really ever play with any other toys or anything like that. Or he'll just hold something and carry it around the house. He doesn't really have an interest in toys. Occasionally he has taken like a car toy and just like ran it over the the carpet just like one time and then he stops. But most of the time he just holds the car. He just likes holding it and walking around with it. They have odd routines and gets upset when they aren't carried out. Like the door always has to be closed or the light always has to be off. All of my children on the spectrum except for Lex, has an obsession with turning the lights on and off, on and off. But I will tell you, Noah is obsessed with lights being off at all times. He's obsessed with his door always being closed. Doors always have to be closed. And then of course, has obsessive interests. Noah was obsessed with Elmo for years and then it was Scooby-Doo. So it's just, it's just a fixation. Some other potential autism signs uh, that 
can mean a million different things, but we're gonna go over there anyway. Impulsivity and aggression. Um, so those are always the more common ones and ones that I, I feel like are more often in boys, doesn't mean it can't be in girls, but you see them more often in boys um, is, is, is definitely the aggression. Um, we have gotten very lucky. Liam is not aggressive so far. Um, and he's not really, really hyperactive either. He's just kind of calm and chill. So not a lot of thinking before they do things. Liam has that. Liam jumps off of chairs because I he likes the, the sensation of falling, I guess. Lack of safety, that wasn't on here, but lack of safety is a big thing. So if they just have no awareness at all. Um, at two, there's not gonna be a whole lot of awareness of danger. You still have to kind of be by them because they're two. I don't know. I don't know if a two-year-old should know better or not. Self-injuring, so punching, scratching, pinching, that kind of thing. We already talked about this, but persistent severe tantrums um, that aren't easily calmed down. Has a regular reaction to sound, smells, tastes, things like that. It's normal if a child fusses and sun's in their eye, but if they're crying the entire time because the sun is so bright, that's not as normal of a thing. So anything just that kind of just strikes you as not normal. And if you are confused and you don't know, there's nothing wrong with reaching out to your doctor and asking them I guess what they should be doing. Has irregular eating or sleeping habits. So eating and sleeping are two things that I've seen varied. I've seen it where kids are really, really picky, hardly want to eat anything. And then I've seen kids that just stuff their mouth full. Liam has never had eating issues um, other than strengthening his mouth muscles to kind of do that. And for a while he couldn't drink from the sippy properly. But other than that, once he figured it out and he was able to strengthen those muscles, he was just a boy on a mission and he loves food. There's kids that are very, very picky or four year old is really, really, really picky. Sleeping, I've also seen it both ways where it's common for children on the spectrum to have sleeping issues. But then I've talked to some, some parents who never really had a sleeping problem with their kids. So we have a definite sleeping issue. Noah, Noah always had sleeping issues. Liam, lots of sleeping issues. He's crawling out of his crib now, so that's that's fun. But that is um, all of the signs, I guess, of it. Um, again, Liam is doing wonderful. There are little quirks. Um, the older he's gotten, the more obvious it is that he's on the spectrum. I know there was some like commentary about the fact that Liam got diagnosed at the age of 18 months. It's kind of young. Some people thought, um, and they didn't necessarily agree with the diagnosis. The older Liam's getting, the more obvious it is. And I 100% agreed with the doctor when she diagnosed him. Liam had so many traits that were so obvious and more of classic. I will try to have the other one up soon but that one the one where i actually show the clips is a lot harder because i have to capture these things on camera which is hard <laughs> but if you guys have any more questions please leave them below um i would love to do another video um i enjoy these i think that these help a lot of parents out there from this point on i think i'm going to be posting every other day i know i said i wasn't going to do that till july 1st but i feel like i don't know i feel like Right now our life is kind of crazy, kind of busy, and I need to slow down a little bit so I can take care of everything and not, not be dead at the end of the night. <laughs> so um, I will be posting every other day. Um, so that's kind of the new schedule you guys can expect. So we will see you guys on Sunday. Where you move, make me blind. You will always be there. There's no doubt in my mind. You will always be there. Heading out to see. And leave the rest behind